Thank you for having me. Actually, I'm not a professor of music. I'm a professor of, uh, of 17th and 18th century American history. So uh, this is, uh, it's, it's all right. So I'm not a musician, but I've uh, studied all my life and I work on the social implications of music. You all went to the concert last night, yeah? Yes. And uh, actually, I rather like that type of music because it has social meanings, the dissonant music, but also it comes out of something called the, uh, the, the, the Associated for Creative Music in Chicago. So it came out of a movement in the 60s with the more avant-garde uh, type music. So one have to explain, one has to, and the beauty of it is that one should not have to be able to pick every note in order to appreciate music. Uh, I bet if you watch the drummer, did anybody watch the drummer? Did anybody see his cymbals? You know what the symbols are? You know where they came from, of course. Every, every, every great mu musician brings his symbols uh, 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 from Turkey. So we'll take a little bit of a look at Washington, uh, uh, D.C., uh, and its role and, and, and its music. Uh, uh, John had mentioned uh, uh, the, the Erdogans and, and mentioned uh, uh, Mrs. Erdogan, Mrs. Uh, Mika Erdogan, and this issue that I think you all have a copy. Actually, she was funded by Mrs. Mika Erdogan, who's become a friend, and, and, and she's been a supporter of the education of African Americans in, 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 in the United States. Not many people do that. So it is a continuation, really, of, uh, of, the, of the work of her husband, Ahmed. I, I, I'll say more about that in about six months. Uh, the first, uh, let me tell you that, that, that there were uh, many links between the uh, history of, uh, of Turkey and African Americans. You saw the picture of out front. Of, uh, of, of the great uh, Jimmy Baldwin. And Jimmy Baldwin, of course, had gone to, did, has anybody ever seen the movie, The Price of a Ticket? And you should just go in one day see it. And it's about the life of Jimmy Baldwin, James Baldwin, one of the great writers in American history. Perhaps the greatest uh, cultural uh, writer of the, uh, one of the greatest of the 20th century, black or white. And he had a great love of, of Turkey as he went. But others also, Langston Hughes, uh, uh, and, and many of those uh, 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 came to know one of your great uh, writers, uh, Nazim Hikmet which uh, I hope all of you uh, know about, and his work, uh, because they appreciated uh, uh, the measures and the way he did it. And of course, he met, along with Pablo Neruda, and Langston Hughes was some of the first to uh, put music, put jazz to music and music structure, and it became very important. When I went to Turkey, I've been there, uh, I actually didn't have any interest in hearing uh, jazz. What I wanted to hear was, 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 was Turkish folk music and the culture of that music, and I think uh, 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 you know, that's important. Now, that's what these people did. Now let's come to Washington, D.C., and John is, is giving you some points about it. But as you see Washington, D.C. now, the beautiful buildings and all these things going up, and it goes up at a cost. As it goes up, African Americans are being pushed out, pushed out of the city that they came to. And many African Americans came here at the start of the 20th century. They came because they're running from segregation in the South. Uh, it was massive lynchings. The Civil War had ended. Blacks had some form of freedom. The whites there were quite upset that they could no longer just uh, completely rule. And so what they did, they ruled not by law, but by counter law. And they forced African Americans out with the lynchings. And by lynchings, I mean they would take a man, they would hang him, and then they would, uh, I, don't know, I don't know how to say it uh, 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 without, uh, they would, uh, they would uh, castrate him. They would uh, uh, demember him, uh, uh, so to speak. And it was a way of running uh, uh, people out of the South. And the economic crisis, and many came to a place like Washington, D.C. And they came to Washington, D.C. in large numbers. And many were trying to get to New York and places. I came from the South to Washington. I didn't want to stay in Washington. It was nothing, the most segregated city. I wanted to get to New York, but I, I, I got here, and I just couldn't, for some reason, uh, leave. But blacks came, and many came uh, at the, uh, 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 something they celebrated about 100 years ago, and that is the, uh, the coming of President uh, Woodrow Wilson. And we celebrate, uh, 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 many are celebrating uh, Wilson's arrival, but it represented something new for blacks, because as blacks had come here, and some had gotten government jobs, President Woodrow Wilson turned all that back. And so the black population, those who had come to work and had gotten some jobs in the government, and what type of jobs did they get? It's messengers, it's dishwashers, it's printers. They weren't important jobs, but they were important and uh, able to, for people to provide for, uh, for their family. And then something else came as they came. And many blacks who came to Washington lived in what we call alleys. They didn't live in a, if you If you can walk p past uh, 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 near Georgetown, I don't know if you've been, even past where the embassy was the other day. Over there, in the back of many of those houses, there were smaller alleyways. And in the back of these alleyways, there were little houses with no running bathrooms. This is where they put the blacks to live. 
And they put them there because they put them out of the way. When I first came to Washington in the 70s, you would take a tour. I've never taken it, but, but I've, I've heard about people taking a tour. And they would tour all the beautiful areas, but never the ghettos, never the slums. Well, many blacks were living in these little houses with nothing. No running water, no, 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 uh, no bathrooms. And this was the way. But all of a sudden, when more uh, uh, whites started coming in, that was even too good for blacks. So they started bulldozing the houses, and they started sending them across the river to something we call Anacostia. We'll uh, 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 we'll come to that. But all during this time, there's a the culture's being developed. And so you see these two trends, the trend to oppress, but also the trend to free. And one of these who started this, and, and, the, and, and we'll look at uh, some aspects, was Duke Ellington, who was born in Washington, D.C. And he was born, and his father had been a, a, a maitre d' at, 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 in some a government established, a hardworking man every day. He took the name Duke because his, his mother treated him like he was a king, like he was a prince, like he was a sultan, so to speak. And, uh, and, 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 and he came here. And Jazz had his, uh, some of his beginnings here. Understand Jazz has many origins. The origins really come from the South. It comes from the Negro spirituals. It comes from African Americans who, after the Civil War, followed the Union soldiers, that the Union soldiers came and liberated them, and picked up the trumpets, and picked up the little bugles, and picked up the drums, and picked up the fife, and went up to New Orleans, and they in New Orleans, they joined together. African music, Louis Armstrong, uh, uh, Creole music, Ferdinand and Memphis, Jelly Real Morton, and the music of, 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 of whites, of European march music, of, uh, 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 of uh, Big Spinadeck and people like that, and they joined those music, and they created this, this music uh, uh, called jazz. And Duke Ellington became the prime force of that. Also during this time, however, it's a time of great repression, a couple of other things happened. World War I came. And as the World War I came, soldiers are fighting. But blacks had to fight for the right to go and fight because the U.S. military doesn't allow them to fight for their own freedom here, and they don't allow them to fight in, in the First World War, except they send them to Europe and they can dig ditches. But they, they argue and they fight. And then, all of a sudden, a man named James Reese Europe, who's from Washington, D.C., becomes the first black to lead a regiment. And he leads the regiment, the Harlem Hellfighters. He leads that regiment, and also he creates a band. And in that band, they started playing all this music, and they go to France, and they start playing this song. And, and, and just as last night, maybe you didn't get the dissonance of they play a song. And all of a sudden, the people recognize what it is, and it's the Marseillaise. And then everybody danced because they've taken this music, and the music hit Paris, and it's never left. And it coincides with something called the Washington Renaissance. And of course, you know the European Renaissance, the remaking. And here, people took this jazz, and, 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 and some people came to this place, Howard University, up on the hill. And as they went there, this is the first great school, of, well, one of the first great schools of learning for black Americans. And as the people come from the South, they look for better education. They create this, this what we call this Renaissance uh, of art and culture. And they go to this place, Howard University. Uh, uh, and they go to, to, uh, to U Street, and here's some of the greats uh, uh, you see there. Uh, then, in, in at Howard uh, University there, which we've shown, and there, the picture of all these young black faces and all these musicians. It's not far from where John uh, uh, showed of Wax and Max's restaurant. And they go to these places and pool clubs and places like that. And then they start societies, such as the Mosul Light. And the Mosul Light has many different me meanings. Musical, societal, literature, yes? But most so light takes nothing. More so light. So what would that mean? Just off your head. More so light. More so light. Because there's a color line in the black community. And those who are lighter, look at the ladies, most the light skin. It's true. Musicians doesn't matter. You, uh, you, it doesn't matter whether you're light or dark. You can't fake it. Uh, you can play it. It's dancing, you can, but you know, you can dance and you, one can look at the beauty. But Louis Armstrong, I mean, you couldn't. Play like Louis Armstrong unless you were Louis Armstrong. A man once asked Louis, how do you play that? And he said, if I had to explain it to you, you would never get it. And certain things would, uh, 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 would come about. Anyway, you have these events coming around in, 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 in Washington. But at the same time, you have great oppression. And uh, blacks are forced out of the alleys. They can't get jobs. In 1919, there are big riots in Washington, D.C. And why are they riots? Because uh, at the time of World War I, the soldiers started coming back. Uh, they think that blacks have gotten their jobs. Blacks didn't take their jobs. They come and they started uh, uh, killing blacks in all, over, all over America. People associate riots. When you think of riots, most times people think that blacks rioting or something, but it's not true. In some cases, in many of the great riots in America, there have been whites who attacked uh, 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 blacks. But you hear about a riots in 68 or, or, or others. You even hear about the, the, the little riots that were had in Ferguson. You've heard about that. Generally, that was a response to what? 
his response to police brutality. So one must look at those things. But anyway, so you have all these events, and in Washington, it's not an easy place for African American to live. But they go to certain places, and there's on U Street, which you didn't have a, a, a chance to go to, or maybe. Not. But they were. They started. Uh, uh, this is the heart of Washington D.C., and they go to places like the Crystal Cabin's Ballroom, which is still there. Ooh. And then uh, uh, some big events happen, and this is when the, Erd the, the Erdogan brothers are, are come here. And they're here in 1939. In 1939, one of the great concerts in the history of America, right by the Lincoln Memorial. Have you seen, you've seen the Lincoln Memorial? It was started in 1922. It was established there in the name of who? Abraham Lincoln, 50 years after the emancipation of blacks in Washington, D.C., uh, 1862. Uh, uh, but when they dedicated this memorial to Lincoln, who in history is seen as the man who freed the slaves, and they dedicated black people cannot go there. Black people cannot sit on the stage, and they have one black person who's supposed to speak, and they rope it off. Uh, 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 so he's not allowed a uh, Robert uh, Mos uh, Musa, Morton. At any rate, you, so what happened was that one day in the Constitution Hall, not far from where the embassy is, the Turkish embassy, uh, this woman, Marion Anderson, the greatest, the great diva, uh, the, the great uh, uh, soprano, is invited to sing at this Constitution Hall. But they find in Constitution Hall that blacks cannot go in there. So Mrs. Roosevelt, Mrs. Roosevelt, the great uh, 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 wife of the President Franklin D. Roosevelt, decides to, along with other people, organize a concert and is held outside at the Lincoln Memorial. So when you see Dr. King at the March on Washington in 1963, you remember that all this started when this woman went there uh, uh, to sing, and here she sang, and the music went all over the world. And listening to that in Washington, D.C., was Ahmed and, uh, 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 and Neshwa Ergen and, and their daughter, Selma, and their mother. And their mother was a great, uh, was a great uh, <coughs> music listener, except she taught them music in the, in the house. Uh, at the same time, another event had come. In 1939, when this is happening, there's a concert in New York City by a woman named Billie Holiday. And Billie Holiday sings a song called Strange Fruit. Southern trees bear strange fruit, blood on the limbs and blood on the roots. What does that mean? She's, she's depicting the lynching of, of, of African Americans. And as she uh, depicts that, uh, the brothers speak about hearing that. And Ahmed speaks about uh, 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 listening to this and how both events had a tremendous impact upon him. And then Billie Holiday comes to Washington. He sings at the club, Bali Club. And as you notice, a lot of times when you see the jazz images, it's about the exotic, because that is the type of things they had to put. The African is different. The African is other. The African is dark. In order for them to sell it, they have to, to uh, 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 somewhat uh, put it this way. It's another discussion. But this Billie Holiday, who sang that song, Strange Fruit, comes to Washington and, 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 prefer, and many others. And so the brothers are seeing that. Now, John told us about when the brothers come to Washington, they go to a school first called St. Albans, which is a school up the streets, the Episcopal school. I sent my kids to school there. The schools in Washington are very, are very uh, 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 they're, not, they're not the best of schools, so one has to struggle. And so my wife and I struggled, and we sent our kids to this school, not to be around white people. That didn't matter, but it was the best education we could afford. Well, the same reason is, is the ambassador sent his sons there, but they made them go to chapel. And, if, and, and, and Ambassador says, our sons are Muslim. You cannot force them to go to chapel. So they sent them to another private school called Landon, much farther up the street. Luckily, they had a chauffeur. And the chauffeur, uh, 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 it, his name will come to me. Uh, as they go to him, the chauffeur also takes them around to different places around town. The chauffeur is also a, a boxer. He takes them to boxing. Uh, so he takes them uptown to hear the music. And Ahmed tells a story about once his father going to New York for a United Nations meeting, and they go, and all of a sudden he's 10 or 11, and he's out all night because he's going to some jazz club, and they look all over New York, put out a warning for him to find him, but he's out with the chauffeur, <laughs> taking him to these jazz clubs. And Ahmed tells a story about uh, uh, Washington, when he comes to Washington, there's only one integrated place, an integrated place are the brothels. I don't know if anybody, anybody old enough to know what a brothel is? Well, you've seen movies, right? I, I don't know what a brothel, what a... <laughs> When I first came to Washington, it, it, this was in the 70s, right around the corner, uh, they would, uh, there was a, a building right on the corner. And in this corner, there were brothels. And you would see mainly uh, white guys uh, uh, with neckties, and they'd be standing out in line. And what they'd be doing, they would come and they would peek, and then they'd run into the buildings. Where they were brothels all over town, right here in Washington, D.C. In, 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 uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the 70s. It's the type of city it, it was, so to speak. So these guys would go, they'd go to all these things, and they'd hear this music. And they came into contact with African and African Americans. And they saw the culture and began to love the culture. 
And Ahmed says, and I quote, Washington, D.C. during the 40s was totally segregated. It was very hard to conceive of this today, but in those days, there were no department stores that would allow black people in uh, as customers. In fact, if you went to a store, if you were black, if you tried on a pair of shoes, if you wore a size 10 shoe, uh, 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 and you tried on a shoe and it happened to be 11, you would have to buy, take the shoe. Ladies, if you wore a size 7 or 6 or, or 5 or, or, or 10 or whatever, and if you tried on a shoe and it was a size smaller, if you tried on, if you were black, you'd have to buy that shoe. And it was just the way, and they weren't allowed in, in, into these uh, stores. And this had a great uh, impact on these uh, 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 brothers. And they started appreciating this music, this culture. And then uh, 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 they started something else. They, they could not, the father says, look, uh, uh, I don't want you out in the street hearing this music, so just bring the musicians here. Bring them to my house. They started bringing them to the embassy. And they brought them in, and I think John is showing you pictures of some of the great people uh, 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 who play, played the Mes Mesmero and Jack T, and just many, many others uh, 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 on the instruments. As they came there, they played through the night, and, uh, and it, was, it was a big thing because the food was good, good Turkish food, and they served. And uh, so one, a southern congressman uh, uh, came and said, because as, as you know, the area is a very elite area, and a, and, and a man from the south says, uh, uh, Ambassador Erdogan, uh, we don't do this. We don't allow those people, Negroes, we don't allow them to come through the front door. That's not, we don't do that. So the ambassador says, and it's, it's a verse in the Bible, uh, 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 and it, 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 it may be in other forms. It says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. In my father's house, there are many mansions. And they took, and you so listen to, uh, to that verse. And, and so uh, uh, ambassador Erdogan says, look, in my house, all my guests do to come through the front door. But if you want to come through the back, if you don't like it, you come through the back door. Uh, and it set it up uh, uh, right then and it created a great uh, commotion. And people saw uh, uh, the house is not just a place for music, but a place uh, for culture, for liberty, but also to sit down and, and, and be treated in equality. And it had a big impact upon these brothers. And they decided to, to, to start doing something uh, more about it. So they started holding concerts. And the first concert they had was at a place called the Jewish Community Center, which is up at 16th and P Street, 16th and R Street. Now, dig this, as they say. Here are two Muslim brothers having a concert of black people in a Jewish spot. <laughs> it wouldn't happen today. I don't care where you go. It would, I doubt it. It would happen. But now, the people at the Jewish Community Center don't know it's an integrated concert. They have no idea. But they don't complain about it because they're also a progressive uh, of people who, who, who welcome this. And the Erdogan brothers started having other. Now, this is at the same time there's a movement to desegregate Washington, but it's not really uh, 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 going that, that way uh, uh, so much. And so the brothers, and then the brothers speak about going out the, uh, to, to they, they go to college in St. John's, Maryland, uh, in Maryland, St. John's College, and speaking about having concerts there. And they try to have a concert there, and in fact, they are arrested. And this has a big impact upon them. Why can't, so they started having concerts all over. And then they take them to the National Press Club. The National Press Club is, is a few blocks down the street at 14th and F Street. Right where that building was, it was one of the biggest slave trade depot in, in, in America. Right there, uh, but they slated, traded slaves there in, in, in the 18th century. And all this had a big impact, but the brothers started having concerts there. And they brought people like Louis Armstrong, who you've uh, 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 no doubt heard about. And then in Washington this time, uh, 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 the brothers are affected by the discrimination. Just look at the numbers uh, very quickly. Uh, are they there? And here's the uh, 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 the black population, and in, in, in we see. But as the black population lives there, they cannot they cannot uh, 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 live in an integrated house. But neither again can anyone who's not white. So Jewish people cannot. Of course, the census. Now you have to be very careful because the census, because in those days the census list Muslims as white. It still does, as a matter of fact, uh, in, in America. But here they have these covenants, and that no person of any Negro blood or, or the Semitic race means Jewish. And no person there, including Armenians, Jews, Hebrews, Persians or Syrians. So no one can have the right to live in these, and there are these laws that are uh, found there. And the Erdogan brothers know about that. And so they challenged this through their music. Then all of a sudden, of course, uh, uh, they started learning and going to the community. And it's very unusual. Uh, uh, to have black, to have uh, uh, white young men or people of a different culture go and visit these establishments. Now, a lot of whites do go, but they go what they call slumming, which means they go. The best example I can tell you is that when I was a kid, we were very poor in the South. 
and sometimes whites would take uh, take their fancy cars and they would come to the ghetto or to the urban to projects where we lived at, and they would say, "Uh huh, if you don't do right, if you're bad, you will end up living like these people." Uh, and they do it. And then the poor people like me, you take a drive. If you had a car, you didn't have a car, and they drive you up to where the well-off whites say, "Look, if you work hard, maybe you can have a house like this." Knowing that we never really uh, uh, would. And so the brothers come and become a part of this whole movement. And understand how this movement affects, it has a big effect on the culture uh, 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 of the society. Lastly, and I think we were told when they formed this organization called, uh, called uh, this organization, Atlantic uh, uh, Records, and it has a tremendous impact. And they started producing musicians, but they also started producing music who have a social consciousness. One of the first ones was a man named Charles Mingus, who was one of the great jazz bass players. And he produced something called Picanthanthus uh, Erectus, the, on the rise and fall of uh, humankind. Uh, and they produced another record called Haitian Flight Song. Haitian Flight Song was by Mingus, but it was dedicated to the Haitian Revolution, which was the grand revolution amongst our uh, blacks. Uh, they produced a John Coltrane, who's the greatest of, uh, of, uh, of, 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 of a jazz musician, something called uh, uh, this is Giant Step Records with a great song of uh, 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 my favorite things. They produced the great Ornette Coleman. If you think you heard some avant-garde music last night, go listen to Avant, uh, 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 Ornette Coleman. You would really hear it. If you saw, you remember you saw the album cover with, uh, uh, with, with, with Paul Desmond, with, uh, with uh, 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 Brubeck, and you saw the, uh, the art on it. That was, advanced, that was avant-garde art, but that was it, what came out uh, during the period. And they started producing people like that. John Coltrane on his record, and this is the one that the uh, Erdogan brothers produced, says, music is the whole question of life itself. And on that Coleman on the record they produced, I think jazz should try to express more kinds of feelings than it has up to now. You're actually hearing and trying to express the warmth of the human voice. And so all jazz does not have to be clearly understood, but you have to understand the feeling and the depth uh, uh, that comes uh, uh, from it. Lastly, uh, uh, the brothers continued uh, the efforts, and one was uh, in some of the great words of, um, of Ahmed Erdogan. And he said, one of his last quotes, all music popular, all popular music stems from black music, be it jazz or rock and roll. And right before he died, he said, I'd be happy if the people said that I did a little bit to raise the dignity and recognition of the African American people. I'd be happy if they understood that I did a little bit to raise the greatness of African American music. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so very much. Uh, we have time for oh, questions. You. you too. So, Great slide. Yeah. Uh, thank you both for the presentation. Both the great job. Um, so, as of late, uh, I've been noticing a, a connection between. Uh, Turkish music and you know music in the United United States. Uh, I listen to hip hop R and B and what I noticed was uh, uh, contemporary R and B artists like um, The Weeknd. He's sampling uh, Nuket Duru, or and uh, Jay Dilla is sampling Barış Manço. You know, um, and even uh, in Los Angeles, amongst like uh, like the white hipsters, they really they're really into like Anatolian rock. So. Well, what is it about Turkish music that sparks this interest amongst uh, you know, African Americans or Americans as a whole? Well, personally, I think it's, it's the folk tradition. I think it goes back to the folk music, to, 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 the, to, to the cries of sorrow. And you hear all this, and you hear it. As I told you, when I went to Turkey, uh, there's this great club, Nordis. It's right on it by Galactica. Galactica. It's right down. G what did it say? Galactic. Galactic. It's, it's right there. And I went, and, uh, but I, I, you know, I could always hear jazz, but I wanted to hear the, the, the root music because that is the same way the root music of African Americans uh, sure. came. And now, this is, I didn't know all this, but it's very interesting because people don't give rappers enough uh, uh, credit for looking back at culture. Uh, I'll give you an example uh, uh, Kanye West. What do I know about Kanye West? All I know is Kanye West and Kim. That's all I know. <laughs> and, and some of the things. I, I, I do know that the one thing I know, he said, George Bush don't care about black folks. Well, I, I understood. <laughs> but he also did something else. He made a song called Blood on the, Blood on the What? Blood on the, leaves. Blood on the Leaves. Where is that from? Billy Holiday. Billie Holiday. Yeah. And most people don't know it. What's it called? Is the, the record is called J Jesus or Jesus? Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. So, it made, so he's listening. 
So I think a lot of these guys are going, and I think a lot of it comes from what Erdogan. Now, the last point is this. Almost anywhere you go in the world, maybe not today, but five or so years ago, there was one person you'd always hear. Who was that person? Anywhere you'd go, you'd hear him. Who was it? Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Everywhere. Everybody's listening to Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson did a song called uh, 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 Free Willy. You know the song Free Willy on that movie? What was the name of the movie? Uh, Free Willy? Yeah. Okay, you heard it when you, my, my kids heard it. You, you know the song. What is the song about? What is Free Willy about? My, my, my kids told me, Free Willy. Down on, like the river what? Jordan. Like the river Jordan. When you in what? The struggle for freedom. So he used that song. He used those songs and those words, you see? So these hippos and people like Michael Jackson are going back. I think that's what's happening, and I'm glad to hear it. You know, so. I was in a village in Ghana, and in the hut on the wall, there's a Michael Jackson poster. There you go. I couldn't believe it. There you go. That's why I knew the answer to your question. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Or, um, just a little thing on Eartha Kitt. Uh, didn't she make the Turkish song famous? Uh, she did. What's the name of it? Uh, uh, you, it's Kadar, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it, it, she went. But understand now why people went to Turkey. Because the music, the culture, the relative freedom, plus it was secular. So people could go if they wanted to smoke and drink a little bit of something. I'm, I don't know what, you know, but uh, I don't smoke a, a drink, but I have smoked and I have drink. So I understand. I understand that Mr. Erdogan, and, and I know that his, his, his wife is a, a devout Muslim, so I know there's, right? And there's discussion about the headscarves and all these things. I, I, you, know, I, I, you know, I was in Turkey, and I went with some congressmen. And, uh, and Lincoln uh, 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 was there. And after it was over, they came to me and said, man, you're the only person we're not mad at. Because he was doing the Armenian crisis, and so they had all this debate because five congressmen voted, you know, on the Armenian thing. So, but I could stick with culture, so I could just, you know, uh, 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 say, uh, say what I wanted. But a lot of people went, like Eartha Kitt and others, because it was a free culture, uh, uh, free, and the music, and the cafes, and the discussions, and the people. So it had a lot to do, I think, with it. John, sorry. John, you want to comment? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Any other? Well, this has been so enlightening. Thank you so very much, and a round of applause. For this.